We are joined by Iowa coach Lisa Bluter and the student athletes Sydney Falter, Caitlin Clark, and Kate Martin. We'll start with opening comments from coach. Yeah, I'm just um, extremely grateful for this group of young women we have. They're just amazing. You know, everybody at the beginning of the year kept saying, oh, you know, Iowa lost so much. They lost all this offense and two starters and everybody kept focusing on that and we kept focusing on what we had and even when we had an injury with Molly Davis going out of the lineup you know Sid just came in there seamlessly and I'm really just proud of this group they kept the focus all the time on on us and I'm really um, I, I couldn't be more happy for such a great group of young women than this so thank you we'll open it up now for questions for the student athletes start in the front Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Caitlin, to, to get back to the Final Four again, to beat the team that knocked you guys out last year, what does it mean to have Iowa in the spot to still be playing a chance to win a national championship? Yeah, like you said, I feel like, you know, it's amazing to be back in the Final Four. It's so hard to get there, especially with this region and how loaded this region was. But, you know, we told ourselves we're the one seed for a reason. You know, we've earned this. We deserve to be in these moments. We're prepared for these moments. Um, but I think we came out here and, you know, our second and third quarters, we played really, really good basketball. And LSU is a really good team. They're hard to guard. They're such good one on one players. Um, you know, they break you down. They make tough shots. They killed us on the glass. Um, but we were just resilient. You know, we never hung our head when things didn't go our way. And, um, you know, that can get you a long way. And, you know, I'm just proud of this group to go back to the Final Four. And, you know, you enjoy this. And then you get to Cleveland and you start prepping for your next game. You know, we want to win two more. And, you know, I think we have the power to do that. Oh, hold on. Go ahead. Howard Mendel at the Nets. Congratulations to all of you for reaching the Final Four. Um, see, this is for you. It's uh, kind of a two-parter. The, the first, um, the amount of time you were defending uh, Anissa Morrow and just take me through sort of that battle, the approach you took uh, to it, and then at the conclusion of the game, if you'd take me through, you know, I know you had family in the stands, what that moment was like for you, if you'd take, you know, moments from that. Yeah, first off, um, Anissa Mara is a great player, and, you know, I think me and Kate both guarded her. Um, Kate guarded her a lot of the game, and she's a great post, and we know what they like to do, you know, they like to get down on the post, post up, and we're a bit smaller than them, but we battled down there, and that was most important. Um, they beat us on the glass, but I think really in the second half, um, we really stepped it up and focused on our box outs and defense. Um, but overall, when I got to celebrate with my family, that was a super special moment for them to be here and share this moment with them. You know, my parents and my brother have been with me and through everything, so I'm just so grateful to have them here with me. Ken Shaw from the uh, Schenectady Gazette. For the players, was revenge on your mind coming to this game for what happened last year? To be honest, no. I feel like we prepare for this game. We focus on Iowa, we do what Iowa does, and we'll come out on top. And that was kind of Coach Bluter's message. It's, it's not about last year. You worry too much about the past. You know, you're going to get caught up in that. It's about being present, being where your feet are. Don't worry about being in the Final Four, be in this moment, be in the Elite Eight. Um, you know, enjoy that and soak that in. And, you know, that's what's going to allow you to win 40 minutes. And that's exactly what we did. And, you know, I thought we just played a really good basketball game. When they went on their runs, we always had an answer. Um, and that's, that's all you can ask of your team. Nancy Armour. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sport. Uh, for Caitlin and, and Kate, how much, you've been there before. Um, so how much more incentive is it to take the step that you didn't, you know, that you came up one step short last year? Yeah, I think that's all, obviously our goal. That's where we want to be. But you got to win one at a time. There's still two more there to get. And, um, that's what makes the Final Four so fun. And, you know, anybody can take it. Anybody can win it. And, um, I mean, yes, we want to win the national title. That's probably what 100 other Division One basketball teams said when they started their season. And um, there's only one team of 360 that could end their season happy. And to me, that's what makes this sport so fun. You know, a lot of people end disappointed. And, you know, being so close last year, I think that's what just drives you. Um, but I, I know our group has given everything we got. And, you know, at the end of the day, you win, you lose. I feel like our group has given so much to this, to this game and to this program that you can always help hold your head high. But I think at the same time, that's the reason we have been able to play such good basketball is we don't want this to end and we want to keep coming back and working hard with each other and 
fighting for one more week and, you know, extend it as long as you possibly can, I guess. <laughs> Chantal Jennings with The Athletic. Caitlin, after your freshman year, the loss to UConn, you said something in the press conference then about like, you know, I wanted to get to a Final Four. I didn't say it was going to be my freshman year. <laughs> Thinking back then, like, what was missing in you and that team to make that step? And what is it that you guys have now that you were able to do it twice? Honestly, like, I feel like, well, first of all, we were a young team. We had no experience um, playing with a young point guard. Like I was a freshman and I think the biggest thing has just been like my maturity and being able to move on from things when it doesn't go my way. And I feel like that's what I'm the most proud of the, over the course of these last two games, just being calm, cool, collected and dialed into what we need to do. I'm not worried about what the other team's doing. I'm not worried about what call the ref is making. I'm worried about what Iowa needs. And you know, when I'm able to do that, I feel like that helps my teammates a lot. And I feel like that's the biggest way that I've grown over the course of the last two years. I'm not sure I really even did that my sophomore year. And, you know, I've always had the basketball skills, it's just been my mind and, you know, making my mind better. And, um, you know, lucky enough, I've had really good teammates that have hold, held me accountable and, you know, also been my biggest fans and been there to support me, you know, the entire way. Uh, Jeff Linder, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Uh, Caitlin, you had a kind of a no-lose proposition here. Either you were going to go to Cleveland for the Final Four or you're going to try out for the, uh, the Olympic team. Just how, um, you know, how, how much greater is this than, than that would have been? <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I mean, obviously, like, the Olympics are always your dream, but to be here with this team and to be able to do what we've done and to extend that out another week is – all I could have really asked. That's all I wanted is to win this game tonight and be going back to Cleveland with, you know, the people I love and, and get to play for Iowa. That's across my chest every single time. So um, for me, it's, yeah, it was like a win-win, I guess. I mean, I don't know. But more than anything, like, my focus is 100% on making Iowa really good and um, not really too focused on all that other stuff. I know that'll be there when, you know, my career ends, and hopefully that's with a win. Hi, uh, M. Adler from the Next. Caitlin, your question. It, were you surprised that Flauje, uh, you know, you didn't get more reps against her, uh, her, her defending you? It seemed like her length was a little bit of an issue yeah. in the late, later in the game. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was too much of an issue. I mean, honestly, like, no matter what they threw at me, I thought we always had a, a good answer. I think our goal coming into this game was to set a ton of ball screens, and that's exactly what we did. And, um, you know, I think they started showing late at the end of the game, which – can sometimes be a little bit better on me rather than drop coverage. But um, coming into this game, I did expect her to guard me, I will say that. Um, but at the same time, every team we play throws multiple defenders at us. I don't see one person for 40 minutes. And that's what they did. Um, they brought somebody in off the bench that guarded me too. She guarded me a little bit. Um, but also, you don't want your best, some of your best players to get in foul trouble, so I don't know if that was the reasoning behind it. But um, yeah, I think coming into this game, that was what I was more prepared for. But you know, you, you don't get to know what the other team's going to do. So. <laughs> Claire Hanna with TSN. First of all, congratulations on the win tonight. Caitlin, this one's for you. At the end of the fourth quarter, I think there was about five minutes left, you hit a three and you pounded your chest and you looked at the crowd. What was going through your head in that moment? I think I just got hyped for a second. And honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be like pretty calm and cool. Like when you're playing a team like LSU, like they're never out of the game, no matter what the time and score is, I'd never wanted to, and that's what I told our girls with, I think there's 4.45 on the clock and we were up 11. I'm like, do not start celebrating, do not start, start getting too emotional. Like, this game is not over, they're gonna fight till the end and that's exactly what they did. And, but sometimes you get a little hype for yourself and you do things that you don't even realize you're doing. But uh, I think that was the only three I celebrated, so. Yeah, Michael Vogel from ESPN.com. Caitlin, um, the three-point percentage has been a little lower during the postseason, mm -hmm. but tonight, nine, um, yeah. which ties an NCAA tournament record single game. You also passed Diana Trazzi for most threes in the NCAA tournament. I wonder if you could talk about were you really feeling it from three-point yeah. range and how big that was, especially in the third quarter? Yeah, I think for myself, like, I probably haven't been shooting it as good from three over the course of the last five or so games, but even if you told me that, I would – like I would still have 110% belief in myself and what I've been able to do this year. And um, to me, like everything averages out over the course of the year. You know, I've had games where I've been two for 16. I've had games where I've been nine of 15, like it all averages out. And I think that just speaks to the confidence that I have in myself and the time I've put in the gym. Like I know I'm ready for this moment. Um, I thought my shot felt good in warmups. 
And it certainly helps when you make your first three as a shooter when you can see the ball go in. I think I was two of my first three. And, um, and then I made my first to start the second half. And that, that certainly helped too. And I thought I got some, some good looks off the dribble. And I'm really comfortable shooting off the dribble. That's what I prefer rather than catch and shoot. So um, it was nice to have a, a game where I, I got some, some good looks at three for sure. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Kate, um, how good is this rivalry or has this rivalry been for women's basketball? And how much did you think that Angel getting hurt, hobbled, whatever you want to call it, affected not just her but all of LSU? Well, we really didn't look at it as a rivalry, honestly. Um, to us, you know, it didn't really matter who was, you know, our opponent for this game. Um, we were really just focused on ourselves. But, like, to have stars that, you know, LSU has and to have stars that you know like Caitlin on our team I think that just really grows the game so in that aspect I think it's really it's really cool I'm sure we got some great viewership tonight in this game um, I think a lot of people were looking forward to this game um, and uh, I'm not I, I don't know for Angel I can't speak for her and uh, obviously you never want to see a, an opponent go down you never want to see somebody get injured I don't know if it affected her or not I mean she came back in the game and she played pretty well so um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not quite sure on that one uh, Nicole Auerbach from The Athletic for, for all three of you but started with Caitlin um, there was a lot of <laughs> anticipation around this game um, in part because of the matchup but just uh, I know you guys are obviously in a winner go home situation, but could you feel it? What did it feel like to be on that court tonight and, and just knowing how many people cared and, and were going to be paying attention? To be honest, like when you step on the court and you're a competitor, like you don't feel that. Like you just, you're there competing. It's 5v5. Like there could have been nobody in the gym and we would have, both teams would have competed the exact same way. And yeah, you're playing for a little more with a final four on the line. But to me, like, I'm not thinking like, oh my God, there's 15 million people at home watching this game right now. Like, no, like that's not what's happening. It's like, what can I do for my team to help me win this game, win the game right now? Um, that's what's going through your mind. If you're too worried about everything else, you're not going to be successful. You got to be completely locked in on, you know, what's happening between the lines. And I thought our team did a really good job of that. You know, it wasn't so and so made a bad call. It wasn't like, oh my God, they've made three shots in a row. It was all about us and what we need to do and. Um, I think that's one of the reasons we won the game, honestly. Last one here for the athletes. Hi, y'all. Isabel Rodriguez with the next. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, Gabby Marshall is not a player whose stats necessarily pop off the page, but I think for anybody who's watching her play, she, she certainly does. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if you could speak about her and what she's meant to the program, and especially today. I mean, she played 40 minutes. so. Yeah, I mean – looking at Gabby and nothing pops off the page but besides she never got a sub the entire game and she is working her tail off on defense constantly so I mean if she was tired we never knew it and that's pretty impressive and so you know I mean Gabby she's going to catch fire one for three she didn't get too many opportunities from three tonight but I mean we believe in her full confidence 100 percent she's an amazing shooter um, and every single person on our team would say that. And so, you know, she, she's probably mad that she shot 33% from the field. But, I mean, we know we're going to need her in later games. And um, I'm, I'm really proud of the way how she never, never gives up on the defensive end, even if her, you know, she's not getting all the scoring or all the, you know, glory on the offensive end. So um, she's meant the world to this team. And she's one of the reasons why we are back to the Final Four again this year. Student athletes, thank you so much thank for the you. time with us this week, and best of luck in the Final Four. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now open it up for lots of questions for the coach. Start right here, front row. <clears throat> Michael Oss, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Lisa, if you would, uh, describe what your uh, defensive strategy was coming into this game and how the players executed it. Actually, um, we thought we would be playing a whole lot more zone than we did. Uh, we started out in zone. It was good for the first couple of minutes. Had to call, they had to call a timeout. Um, and then we tried trapping in our zone. Uh, and that really wasn't working. Um, and after that, we went to our player-to-player -player defense. And I, I was so impressed with how hard our players worked um, in there, especially in the paint. It was, you know, they're, they're a hard group to, to defend in the paint when you have both Angel and, 
uh, and Morrow in there. It's just, it's a lot to guard in the paint. Go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead over here. Sam Ohaj with WVFI Quail. Um, the third quarter, you guys were able to pull away. What defensive adjustments were made in the locker room at half that led to the great defensive showing we saw in the third quarter? You know, there wasn't a lot of adjustments that we made. We just talked about how we needed to box out, and we didn't really do that, um, as you can tell here. But it's ironic. They had 23 tur uh, rebounds and only 14 second-chance points. That's a really low number for 23. But a lot of it was kind of like, you know, just kind of bouncing it off the backboard a couple times to yourself almost. Um, but, um, you know, I think when we came out, the game's tied. We come out, Caitlin hits that deep three. And it just gave us a lot of momentum. It just, you know, and then we get a stop and then another score. And all of a sudden, you know, they have to call timeout after two minutes again. I just think we, we started the game and we started the third quarter with a punch. And uh, that really helped us a lot, gave us a lot of confidence on the defensive end. Hey, Coach Doug Feinberg, the AP. I asked you the other day if there are any more wow moments left from Caitlin, <laughs> and then she drops 41 and 12 today, and again, the regional final, I think she did 41 last year also. Can you put in perspective what she did tonight for you guys to get you back to the Final Four? Yeah, that, I mean, Caitlin, I feel like I've talked about her, like used every word imaginable to describe her. But I, you know, I thought what she said today about her maturity has just grown so much over four years. I really saw that tonight. I mean, it, really, it could have been a highly emotional game. It could have been, a, you know, a lot of talking going on out there just from what happened at the end of last year. And honestly, she put it aside. She put everything aside. And so I think her maturity, um, her just her communication with her teammates was really good tonight. I mean, she was in the huddle really building others up, which I love when she does that because it means so much coming from her rather than me. Um, but I mean, her, 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 her distant shots were amazing tonight. Her logo threes were incredible. You know, I mean, I just, how do you defend that? Right. It's like, it is nearly impossible. And, uh, so that obviously gave us some great momentum. Lisa Howard, my Dalton Nets, congratulations. Um, two things, if I could. The first on, on Caitlin, she mentioned ball screens, ball screens, ball screens being a critical part of this. And you talked about we're going to find ways of getting her to the basket, which is not a thing against LSU that she did, but she did right away here tonight. How much of that is a schematic change? How much of that is um, just even her maturing and getting that much better again to the rim? Yeah, I was really happy in the first quarter. She got to the rim quite a bit and uh, came off ball screens. And we really encouraged her to do that because we didn't want her to start out with the logo threes. We wanted her, to, we thought she could get to the rim and we wanted the higher percentage shots to begin with. And so I was um, I'm pretty happy that she did that. And then I'm telling you, third quarter though, she came out with a different look in her eye. And I, there's no, I could tell her all I wanted to that time to get to the rim and it wasn't going to happen. So right here. Lisa, uh, M. Adler from the next, you know, between this game, the West Virginia game a couple of rounds ago, you've had to, your team has had to really be incredibly physical and play sort of like above your height, especially in the paint defense. Has that been for you a big sort of learning point and growth from last year? You know, we've had to play that way all year. I mean, um, you know, Addie O'Grady went in and played some good minutes tonight for us. She had 15 minutes, I think. Um, she did a nice job in there when Hannah got into some foul trouble, but We've been undersized all year, and you know it's just the way it is. You know, it's you can't do anything about it, and so don't gripe about it, right? It's just go out there and play, and use your use what you do have. Do you have speed? Do you have agility? You know, do you have hops? Use those things instead of focusing on oh, I wish I was you know four inches taller. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, the Athletic. Uh, Lisa, you mentioned you know throwing punches. They threw punches back. I mean, it was such a high-level game, and it was so frenetic in the first quarter in particular. What is that like to experience, to be part of, as the game's unfolding, and then obviously to to come out victorious? But what what does it feel like to be in a game like that? Yeah, you know, we we always tell our players basketball is usually a game of momentum swings, and. You know, you got to make yours ride as long as you can and, and, and hang on during theirs. And they had a really good momentum swing there in the, what, the second quarter, was it? Um, they had a really nice momentum swing. I was just happy that – I thought we were going to go up to, you know, to go into the locker room, and I was thrilled with that. But then we ended up being a tied, and, um, you know, we just went in there and said, hey, we got 20 more minutes. Um, 
they, they were very locked in at halftime. I, there was a lot of belief in that locker room. There really was. Coach uh, Ken Shaw from the Daily Gazette is connected. I'll ask the same question I asked the players. How important was it not to focus on what happened last year and just keep the focus on this year and getting, winning the game, get to the Final Four again? I can tell you, we didn't talk about last year's game at all. We did not talk about it at all. It just wasn't important to us. That was last year, different teams, different scenario. Um, we just kept focusing on this, this time we get to you know, play. We get to play today. Um, we focused on ourselves. And I know it, it sounds elementary and it's just what they said, but it, that's truly what we really believed. I mean, we were just focusing on ourselves and not focusing on LSU going into this game. Lisa, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, Kate said it's not really a rivalry, but obviously you've had these two huge games. How good is this back and forth between LSU and Iowa? Well, I mean, we talked about that last night, and I told the team, this is not a rivalry. This is a competition. It's a competition against an opponent. It is not a rivalry. I just don't feel like we've played them that many times that you consider it a rivalry. Um, but, I mean, I think people were highly interested in this game. And so I, I think people were excited to see this play, to see this matchup again. Um, so I think that was there, the excitement around the game, but it certainly wasn't one that we feel like is a rivalry. It was just going out to compete. Last one here. Hey, Coach. Isabel Rodriguez with the next. Um, I just to bring it back to Gabby Marshall, I mean, oh, for you from thank you. the coaching perspective, mm -hmm. I mean, it's different to when you're like a teammate to have somebody who's that consistent. But for you as a coach, like what does it mean to have somebody who can go out there and put 40 minutes on the floor the way that she does so consistently and, and with so much energy? I'm so glad that you noticed her because I think she doesn't get enough credit for how hard she plays. First of all, yes, yeah, she is a sniper. She can't. I mean, she shoots you know, one out of three tonight, you know, it's 50% adjusted, but she has two steals. She has a block shot. I mean, she's the shortest person out there and she has a block shot. She consistently guards the toughest person. She consistently gives it all that she has defensively, whether it's, you know, getting out and denying or understanding to get her hands up, something as simple as that. She is a great defensive player and I'm so proud of her effort and I'm glad that you recognize that as well. So thank you. Coach, thank you for your time you. with us this week, and best of luck in Cleveland. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, and safe travels.